So this is a zinc anode and what this does is if you have a difference in um, metals underwater it creates like a, an electrical charge between the two so you get a flow of electrons from one um, one metal to the other and what that ha what happens there is if you've got mild, mild steel um, say against stainless steel you can actually cause the electrons to flow from the mild across and you can rot the mild steel quite quickly so what happens is we put this anode on because this is more noble than or less noble than any other metal um, so we bolt this on and this will actually corrode before anything else um, it's the same kind of concept as in galvanizing you galvanize a mild steel pipe because the zinc will corrode a lot quicker than the mild steel so I'm welding on these galvanized nuts or uh, bolts so that I can just bolt this on like this so when we're in the Caribbean or somewhere really really far away and Neve needs to dive down to change the anodes because I can't swim she can just unbolt these and put new ones on but um, yeah they should last three or four years anyway unless there's something really wrong Tried to weld. Yeah, tried to weld, yeah. Basically, we're covering up my ship welding with loads of paint. Looks like the heat wave is over. Back to reality, I think. We're pretty lucky we painted when we did because if we painted like a few hours later or even today, well, we wouldn't have been painted today, but like we probably wouldn't have got paint on quick enough or early enough before the launch. So you can see that uh, the spot where Sheila Doe was is now empty, so that means that we can be lifted out and put over there and then pushed out into the bay or into the river. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's getting nearer, nearer and nearer. We have four weeks from launch now. So today I'm going to finish off the uh, few bits on the engine, I think. Or I'm going to try to, anyway. And um, next week then I can put the rudder back on and the propeller's coming back from uh, Dargo Engineering. 
Um, we actually sent the propeller back to our Daglo Engineering for a service and the engineer sent me some videos so he sent me a, a couple of photos of before and, and a couple of photos of him stripping it down and then a couple of videos of him um, um, before and after like a, a video before and a video of it actually how it looks now and it's I can't wait to get my hands on it to work about it. So what I've done here is I've put a, a temporary floor in um, either side of the engine and with I'm fitting kind of I'm fitting the battery and I fit some temporary fuel tanks as well so basically I want to get the engine like now that it turns on the key and it runs I want to be able to turn it on and just leave it because everything was kind of thrown around and it was very temporary and it kills me to do temporary stuff this is killing me to just bolt the battery to a piece of wood on the floor I, I, I want to do it properly but in the long run this is going to be the better right option because it means I can get the boat up um, to work on it more often and I can do these things right but for now it's just so that I can use the boat but uh, yeah it is killing me a little bit but um, I'm just going to drive on with it So there's my battery mounted um, on my kind of temporary floor. The engine wiring is pretty much all tidied. Um, last few jobs I need to do on the PSS bearing at the back there and stuff, but um, I'm not too pushed about that this week. Um, yeah, and then it's just a case of tidying all this stuff up. Ugh. So if you remember before, we had like two uh, unused seacock holes here. Um, just because I didn't want to use those as seacocks anymore because there's no toilet up this side of the boat. So we cut a plate out of it because it would be a bit easier to weld it because there was a bit of corrosion around the two holes. So we just cut a plate out and welded in, well the, lad, the lads welded in um, another plate but that's beautiful welding. So next week I'm going to clean that off to make sure there's no porosity and then I'm going to put loads of Joe's elastic on it and then another bit of tie coat and then we're going to anti foul next weekend so um, yeah it's getting exciting. So I've run out of time this weekend. Um, basically the jobs that are left are we've got to put the rudder back on, pack the rudder, the, the packing land on the rudder, we've got to put a bit more Tycos on the hull, and then we've got to put the anti-fouling on the hull. Um, so it's getting really exciting. Um, pretty much after next weekend the boat will be able to float and all the floaty stuff is done. So we can crane her in, put her in the water, and she'll either be a really, really nice sailing boat or a really expensive mooring for somebody. So uh, we'll find out in like four weeks. Before I do call it a day, I want to talk about uh, these challenge coins. So I'm assuming that anybody who watches my channel watches SV Seeker because I think all of my subscribers have come from them. Basically they put together this um, kind of collector's coin uh, group. So there's about eight of us in the group now. And what we have is these little coins. So this is our coin. And then you've got Rupeg's coin. You've got SV Seeker's coin, and you have Acorn to Arabella's coin. So um, the reason I have these ones, by the way, is because those three are people I would call close friends by now. Um, I mean, I've spent time with them, and I speak to Doug all the time, and I speak to Damien and Ryan every day. Basically, I put the link to these coins in the description. Um, any of the profit that does come from these coins goes straight to the boat builders. Um, and it's been a huge help to me because in June we sold enough coins to pay for my propeller repair. Um, so, you know, the, it does make a difference. This money isn't just being spent on pints. Well, I probably did buy one or two pints, so I won't admit, I won't lie. My propeller was paid for by the proceeds of these coins, so it does make a huge difference, and I'm massively thankful for anybody who has them now. So, the last thing before I go is um, a huge thanks to Doug and Betsy from SV Seeker because they've done a fantastic job of not only creating a community around their own their own build, but what they've done is they've actually brought a lot of different boat builders from all over the world into kind of a, a one single forum and I've made some fantastic friends and that's thanks to Doug and thanks to Betsy. Um, so I'm, I'm hugely thankful for that. So thanks again and I'll see you again next week.